Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Real Estate Checks, take two. I just said some pretty crazy shit in the first introduction, so I'm going to see if I can say less crazy shit in this one. I'm, of course, Marco Kozlowski, and I'm joined with Frank Galluccio out of Toronto and Gabriel Areish out of Montreal, and I am out of Orlando today, just getting back from Mexico. Amazing trip. And uh, we're going to discuss today something that we actually have been doing for a while, and we never really mentioned it, uh, which is start our own private equity fund. Uh, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. It's a $50 million fund divided up into two. We're going to discuss why we've done that in, in a second. And of course, if you have not yet yet watched the first 10 episodes at least, please do that. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not listen to the rest of, of this episode or any of the other episodes. Listen to the, t- the first 10 first. It gives you the basic basics. And then from there, you can listen to as many of these um, things as you want. And of course, our goal, our mission, our passion is to help you achieve financial independence by developing skills that will allow you to use other people's money, uh, processes that allow you to drive price down on any asset that you would like to buy or a series of assets that you would like to buy that spin off cash flow so you can really have a better quality life and spend it with whom you want to spend it with. If you wake up in the morning and you see someone you don't want to be next to, and you're stuck because of finances, you can actually figure that out by yourself. Doesn't You can actually get out of any situation within a very short period of time uh, and get out of your job if you don't like it or whatever you want to do if you just learn the skill sets and apply those skill sets and uh, basically do what we've been doing for a very, very long time. And today our topic is going to be our own private equity fund. So um, I don't even know how we got the idea, but it sparked and we said, you know, let's do this. And, you know, we, a speed of implementation is very, is very important. And he says, in the next 30 days, we're going to do it. And a year later, we actually got it done. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite a year, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting it's there. Be, yeah. It was supposed to be done October of last year, I believe. Correct. Yeah, You're right. It's by Halloween, but, uh, yeah, you know what? It, it is I, what it is. It's a I process. Remember, right? You know, I don't remember the conversation with you we had that before we got into it. I, I know we just wanted to fill in a, a, a void or a gap in the market and how do we serve and, and help other people that want to get into real estate and we're like shit you know can they ride on our coattails how would they do that what would that look and i think one of you bacalas thought of hey let's do a private equity fund um and I'm like shit okay <laughs> how do we do that obviously we had to get mentored yeah. to do that like you know we preach in real estate you know follow what other people do and 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 people that know what they're doing that is um, so I, I don't know how that conversation for me, it, it's something different, uh, something a little bit more diversified. Um, it's actually really helping, um, and filling that, that void in the market, uh, that I'm excited about because you know what, it, it could be, uh, you, you, we'd be, I'm assuming we're going to be helping other people and, and changing their lives by offering that opportunity. Um, not only from those that are, ta- uh, are, are coming into the fund, but those that were, um, funding deals for so it, it's like a win-win for for both and you know we get to take a little of a back seat where you know we still make a little bit of a little bit of change from it but um, I think the, the the reward mostly goes to the investor that has this money just laying there and want to put it or back to, uh, put it in something that um, that's going to make it grow uh, their money capital grow and at the same time those that are coming to the fund for 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 the money um, you know, they can be lucrative as well with their opportunity. Well, it's a multifaceted, I, I guess, uh, vehicle for us, right? I mean, obviously, he's, a lot of people want to do real estate, and but a lot of people want to be involved in real estate and either don't have the time or don't want to put in the effort or are just too busy doing something else but have access to capital and they just want it to grow. So, you know, how many times do people ask us, you know, can I invest in this? Can I invest that? And the answer is no. Like, we can't really just take your money. There's rules around r- taking money. So a private equity fund that's, you know, th- that's going to be under a regulation that's uh, permitted by the Securities and Exchange Commission allows you to do that, where investors can invest in this vehicle, which is going to in turn invest into real estate. So that kind of helps that individual that that has access to capital and wants to invest but it also helps uh it, it helps 
maybe someone who wants to do all the work and find the great deals and maybe has a harder time getting funding or whatnot. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that we can fund everyone. That's not that's not the case. And in fact, it probably won't be. But each private equity fund, whether it's ours or there's, there's you know, there's tons of them out there, whether we're real estate or other industries. But what they do is they each have their own set of rules. So, you know, private equity fund A maybe invests only in residential homes. And so if that's your cup of tea, that's what you're raising and what that's what you're looking for in terms of an investor, you know, you're marketing for that, then that type of private equity fund might be willing to fund your transaction. Same thing with, you know, multifamily or hotels or any other asset class. So I think it it, it what that provides is flexibility where it allows it allows us to, to help different individuals based on what they want out of real estate. I want to take two steps back and start with a conversation that we had because I don't actually remember why we decided to do this. Um, I know that we talked about it and then we did it, but I don't feel it was my idea. And Frank doesn't think it's his idea, so it must be Gabe's idea because I don't remember it being mine. <laughs> Well, I think I think a private equity fund is something that you may have had in mind where you wanted to create a vehicle to help, you know, students be able to help them get some 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 yes. funding. Yes. Yes. Uh, but obviously with with my background in in, you know, working with the regulators, this is something that's kind of, you know, it's always been something that I wanted to do. Okay. And and then I think when we brought it to the table and the timing where, you know, the real estate now where it's going and the opportunities that are coming along, I think just you know, all that put together was like, yep. you know what, this is the right time. And also, you know, the new curriculums were all fixed up. It was, it was, a, it was, yeah, I think timing was good. Yeah. It was a series of happenstances that made it work. And uh, we also went to um, an event uh, in Denver. I think that That's also right. helped. Yes. Where we all went there and uh, we said, I, I think we're, you know, we need to step up our game a little bit and pull people's money because we generally don't. We use private equity funds for our own deals uh, or private partners for gap funding when we can't get all the money that we need then we can get a third party to come in and you know give us the cash that we're that we need um on a on a, on a mortgage basis <clears throat> but uh yeah the fund was our first idea was to create this big 50 million dollar fund and uh, and we just started at 50 million because we thought it was a good number it's actually a very small fund as, as, as far as funds go that's like a little pipsqueak, you know, the nipple on a hamster fund. Uh, that's how small it is. Very, very small. I never saw a nipple on a hamster before. Go, go yeah, look yeah, at your yeah. cages, Frank. You got you, two of them. No, no, it, it, well, it's, it's a guinea pig, but <laughs> I'm not looking for no nibble there. But I, actually, you know what? I didn't I say think nibble. I didn't nibble. say nibble. Yeah. I said nipple. nipple. If you want to nibble on the nipple, that's between you and me. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyway, I like your analogy. Anywho, so that that anywho. that's fine. Continue, yes. But actually, you know what? It did start from Colorado because when we were flying back, we were mentioning like shit. We're like, damn, this is good. We can, you know, we can help the students, right? Yes. And and then Gabe got all excited, but just because of his background, um, yep. so it was used to. So we, it's it's because well, of YouTube. I'm not going to. I'll 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 give all the credit to Gabe. Um, I'm, no, I'm not, no, we I, I don't I, have to take that. Hey, no, we all I, I'm going to give it to you because <laughs> we look. We all have a lot of shit going on, right? And you know, we don't. None, none of us have to work, and you know, we're, we're, we take on these projects because we really want to help and serve as many humans as possible. Like this podcast, uh, it's just it's fun to do and it's enjoyable. It, you know, does suck up a little bit of time, but the the reward is. 10 times more vast or 100 times more vast than the short amount of time it takes us to do this. But we only have a limited time during a day to be able to accomplish things. And there's, I can't believe weeks and weeks and weeks go by like so fast. Oh my God. And, you know, we're already, you know, almost we're in the summer. <laughs> I don't know where the time went. I feel, I still feel like 2020, 2020 is about to come. And we're almost, you know, halfway through 2021 already, which is crazy. So yeah, so uh, so we we started this fund, and um, and you know we had to go through first finding the best attorneys. We had to go through finding uh, because th as you're taking other people's money and you are using it to invest, you have a responsibility, a fiduciary responsibility, to make sure you do things correctly. And of course, you have to be registered with the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. And if you do anything wrong, you're wearing an orange suit. So you have to be very, very careful when you're when you're collecting these funds and do things in a very specific way. And um, as you you know, you suggested, I've never done a fund, neither of you two, and we need help. And we had to get a mentor, and we did. And uh, it was probably the best investment we've made so far, and um, it's been really good. So who wants to talk about this splitting up? Because I think you, you both of you have been much more involved than I have into this project. 
And I do want to say that I'm going to be the village idiot in these conversations, which is totally okay with me because I always want to associate myself with smarter people than I. So I'll, I'll let you guys take the lead as far as, you know, where were those conversations? Yeah, Gabe, went. if you want to go, well, I, listen, the splitting up, I think, was more of a, a, of, of a marketing um, decision yeah. more, more, than, more than not. Uh, it's twofold. Yeah. Marketing is one of them. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted, so we had the 50 million, which was like you said, Marco, that's a very, it's a drop in the bucket compared to other funds that are out there. But given that we were the first ones, uh, this is our first one out of the gate. Um, we felt, and, and even through our mentors that we do have, uh, that if we split it into a 2030, uh, I think we decided to do a 2030. So mm-hmm. $20 million and then a 30 million for the second fund, um, was predominantly to oversubscribe on the first one. Um, uh, number one, because we, we wanted a fund, we didn't want to launch a fund for 50 million and we didn't reach our goal. Uh, like I said, we're, we're versions at this. We're, this is our first one coming out of the gate. So we want, we didn't want it to be perceived as a failure if we didn't hit the 50 million within six months or eight months or whatever target we're giving ourselves. So we figured, you know, 20 is, is, is a reasonable uh, amount. So we would like to start with the 20, um, learn from that experience and oversubscribe on that. So once you oversubscribe, then there's that fear of missing out. So hopefully the second one will go a lot more smoother from our lessons. Marco. So, so um, when you say there's a, you know, we're failures if we don't do the 50, can, well, can you go, can you just, for the, for, I want to, I want to pretend that someone does, you're a listener, you have no idea what we're talking about. This is fairly more elevated finance than what most people are used to. Yeah. So what I, I want to make sure that the listener is really understanding what we're discussing here so, so you know it's not just us talking about it i really want to make sure there's an understanding well, around the it. Num- the number's a goal right so if you if you say i want to you know we want to raise 50 million and then you raise 49 million in theory you haven't achieved your objective and that's what's perceived as a failure even though you know raising 49 million is 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 not nothing it's it's you know a lot of people would would you know, with rave at being able to raise 49 million. But when you're comparing it to 50, then that's where it can be perceived as a failure. It, it, that's, that's the only, I think, failure that can be perceived here is whether you, you know, you raise 40, it's still a lot of money. But if your goal, if on your, you know, private placement memorandum, which is a document that you have to have, it says you can raise up to 50 million and you can't, then the question is how come, why haven't you been able to raise that? And, 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 you know, it, we we just don't feel like we need to go down that path. Uh, it, it could be that, you know, we'll oversubscribe at 50 million. I think we're very confident in our ability to raise money, uh, you know, based just on our experience and track records. But, you know, if that's the case, then why not, you know, hit 20 million first and then decide to go to 50 after through a $30 million fund. But there's a really, there's another reason to the marketing. And the other reason is, you know, we're choosing a business model to go down, down, down the private equity fund route and that business model is you know we've tested it in terms of how we do business every day but in terms of the appetite from an outside investor who's going to be completely passive will they have the appetite for this type of business model so if we go down the road and you know we're having trouble raising 20 million dollars then maybe the 30 million dollar fund we can then you know change a few things or we have the ability to remain flexible that way whereas if you know we raise 20 million and find a hard time and we have a 50 million dollar fund then it's like you're guaranteed perceived failure uh, whereas you know when you have the two funds you can actually turn around and start shifting things to appeal to you know the investor so cuz cuz once we launch the fund with a specific rules we can't change it at all that's right so as we start going we learn the lessons of the 20 million or the objections that people get or the questions that people have or why are we doing it this way doing it that way well your memorandum says this and again that's like the bible right it's the it's exactly what it is it's, it's the word of the gospel it's the torah it's the commandments you know, it's, yes it's yes. the 10 co- yes and you, we cannot change it period if we do it's orange suits so you can't change anything once it's there well you can but then you have to send out a whole lot of paperwork and it costs tens of thousands of dollars and I'd it's not worth not it change it. it's not worth it exactly it's cheaper to go <clears> a different <throat> one yeah exactly exactly so um so once once it's written uh and we have all these um this feedback from different investors that are are looking into our 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 model of buying assets at significant discounts or lending the money because we do both um, in, in in different asset classes. As as we get that feedback and if we don't sell out, then we're going to know exactly what to do on the thirty million dollar one, or change the twenty and go into a different direction, or just 
not do something at all. And if, if we sell out quickly and we oversubscribe, then we can say we sold out of this fund in 18 minutes. We're going to open up the next fund and you better get in quick because the last one sold out in 18 minutes or whatever the number of minutes is that yeah. we're, you know, that we're going to open it up to. So it, it, it's, it's like concert ticket. If you, if you know that every, as soon as, you know, the Rolling Stones uh, concert sold, the last one in London sold out in 18 minutes, as soon as the tickets are announced, you're going to want to get in quickly or you're going to miss the boat. And that's kind of the, the, um, the market perception that we're looking for and need. It's also right. uh, because we had the hybrid version of, of uh, the private equity. Uh, obviously, we're testing the waters to see how the market perceives that. But also, we're dealing with a lot of third-party suppliers, um, like software that we're using behind the scenes and uh, uh, CPAs and accounting systems. So we want to see how those work uh, with the $20 million. Uh, before we, you know, before we have a, a larger fund and, and move forward, so it, I think it's almost like a, not an incubator, not not a lab test, but uh, uh, we we got a good team behind us between our SEC lawyers and you know the software that we chose and our mentors. Our, our mentors. <laughs> um, so we, we 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 spoke to a lot of people, so we're not doing this blindly and and you know um, going in there without knowing anything, uh, but we're we are kind of going in. Uh, I think we're just keeping our expectations open to say, you know what, let's use the first one as a, as a, as a base model and let's see what flies. Let's see what comments we get back, what feedback we get back. And then we can even actually improve uh, the second one. Maybe we're going to find a, a tighter niche uh, for the second one. Maybe the hybrid didn't work as good or people were kind of hesitant. So that's what we're looking for. And I think that was the, the, the main reason and part of the perceived uh, failure. Um, you know, if it takes us, eight months to, to, to raise 50 million versus 18 minutes to raise 20. Uh, people are going to look at that differently. Absolutely. And it's a conversation and that's very important in life in general. Um, I just got a little aha moment in that one of the reasons I think all three of us are quite successful is we don't have an idea and then push it. We always listen to feedback and then adapt as the feedback comes in. Right. Sometimes you have an idea and this is just what you want to do. And this, but, but this is my idea and your, your ego is so attached to that idea that you stop growing. You're, you're so focused on the thing that you want that you're not listening to the feedback that's there. I want to make this the best buggy whip you've ever seen, but no one, you know, no one does buggy whips anymore, but this is the best one. Or I, I have an idea that's, you know, um, uh, this taxi company, well, Uber exists, but I love taxis. So it, it's, you know, you're so focused on whatever the idea is that you're, you're not, you're missing the opportunity of really helping and serving other people. So as we get the feedback of the investor who has the money and we're, we're very generous in how we've, we've put this together. The investor that comes with money to the table, they're getting the lion's share of the profit. They're making most of it. So they're piggybacking on the 22 years of experience that we have. So this is kind of cool because if you want to be a student of ours and you want to learn how to, you know, buy assets at significant discounts and use other people's money, that's great. But some people that I bump into have a ton of cash and they don't want to learn how to do that. They don't want to take the effort it takes to put a deal like that together. They just want to write the check and get a bigger check. And at one point you have money that you want to have put to work for you. And I don't have that outlet at all right? We just don't. Mm -hmm. So if you have, I can show you how to buy significant discounted assets that takes, it's a process, but I have a lot of lazy people that just already have money and they just don't want to go through that process of owning the asset. They'd rather own the debt. They want to be part of, you know, the, the cash flow that comes in and, and think about it. You know, if, if we're buying an asset, let's say at a 12% return and we're buying the asset, um, and we're paying 6% for the money, there's a 6% spread. Right. So the person who put the deal together has a 6% spread plus equity plus, plus, plus. But the person that's lending the money may, may be making an 8% return, for example, on the contrast, because um, our, I don't know if we can discuss it or not, but, you know, we're, we're paying an 8%. I don't know if we're allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'll, I'll edit it out if I'm not allowed to say it, but we're paying an 8% pref, meaning that they get the, the first 8% is goes to the investor. And then there's 80% um, of the profits after that go to the investor as well. So they're making, you know, 8% plus 80% of whatever the profits are. So it's, it's, it's significantly more actually than if you were a student and learning this. Although you don't have any money involved, if you're a student, you're still making a 6% spread 
on average per million, which is 60,000 per million, you know, if you have $10 million in assets, it's $600,000 a year of passive income plus equity plus, plus, plus. But there's work involved to do that. You have to put in skill and sweat equity and do all these things in order to get there. And as you start getting cash, then you're going to say, well, shit, now I need to make do something with my cash. And instil, instead of making a 6% spread plus equity plus, 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 and the tax deductions, and there's a whole lot of benefits to doing this. So I'm not suggesting that you don't buy assets at all. It's just a different side of the business. I, and I, we solved it. And we basically solved it with, with this product. And yeah. that's the thing is we weren't married to the solution. We were married to the problem. Like we fell in love with the problem where there's a problem and we have to fix it. And it's, you know, whatever solution comes, that's the one we're going to use. And we weren't just, oh, the solution is a private equity fund. Let's make sure it fits with this problem. And, and that's a big difference because most people are married to the solution. Yeah, no, and I was going to say, a, a lot of people do have, like Marco, you, you nailed it. A lot of people do have money, but they just don't want to go through that learning curve to, to go find their properties. And I know there's a lot of development going on, just for instance, in Toronto. And you don't want to get on a, on a development when they post up a, a, a billboard saying, hey, you know, phase one now open. That's too late. You want to be part of the developer and, 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 um, and the construction crew, you want to be part, you want to be a partner in that, in the development of it. And you let the experts, they're writing on their coattails. They're writing on the engineer. I mean, on, on the developer, um, and the contractor. Part of that. Well, yeah, they are part, part of, of it. Yes. They're part of the, the same yeah. thing. So you're, you're becoming a, a, a partner in that project for that, you know, 20 story, 50 story apartment building, but you don't have to know how to build it, permits, what it's like, whatever, man. Here's my money. I have faith in you. So they're writing on their coattails. That's well, basically well, what we're doing. And that's what we would do too. Like, yeah. you know, outside of real estate, for example, look, we just had, you know, we just discussed crypto on another podcast, for example, and we, we, we were very adamant that we're not, we're not experts in the field. But let's say you wanted exposure to crypto, for example, and you have money then why would you go learn everything from A to Z if you don't have time? Our passion is real estate. This is where we want to spend our time. Then maybe you find a private equity fund that's an expert in cryptocurrency and invest there. And then you can ride their coattails, like you said. So it, they're just different investment strategies for different individuals based on their different needs, right? It's what suits them at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. So we're, so, we're at the home stretch with this. Uh, I think every time we think we're at the home stretch, something else comes up, but... Um, that's the fun of the business. That's I, I love it. I I love the journey it, more than the destination. It is, but now I'm getting anxious because I know we're at the uh, at the end uh, towards the, the end. The line, yeah. I see the finish line, and it's yeah. it's your running the checkered, and the checkered flag, the checkered flag, and I I, <laughs> I just want to do it because I'm I'm very anxious, and so is a lot of other people very anxious to uh, see this actually, you know. Uh, go fruition, live and, yeah. and we can start doing the marketing which will be uh, a, another journey in itself um so at least to get one it, because we did put a lot of work into it um you know like you said marco i think we discussed this last summer we thought we were going to have it done by october which is very ambitious goals um but you know other stuff gets in gets involved and then we had to wait for other people as well and we had to learn you know a few things along the way as well so that takes a little bit of time Listen, uh, you don't, you can't rush baking the cake. You know, we say that to our students and we have to take our own, uh, take our own medicine. Correct. To, you know, as fast as we want a deal to happen, it doesn't mean it's going to, our emergency is not the emergency of what's happening. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a lesson I had to learn multiple times in my life. And as, as much as you want something done immediately, when it's a project that involves a lot of regulation, uh, a lot of uh, to make sure that other people's money are is done, you know, collected safely, properly, uh, making sure all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. You know, we're even looking at, you know, insurance and uh, liability, you know, general liability insurance, which is an outrageous expense, but necessary. You know, all these necessary things, while we feel it necessary, do we need those things? No. Could we operate you know, without it, yes, we had this discussion today so we can rope it into the conversation, but is it the best thing for the investor? And the answer I think would be yes. So anything that is best for the tribe or the investor or who we're doing business with is what we want to do. We, we want to make it so brain dead simple for people to either get involved in buying these assets and the education side and the skill side of doing things, or here's the money, go have fun with it. Uh, and so I can make a shit ton of money using your expertise or leveraging. Because if you think about it, imagine, you know, I have a tribe of, of people that are scouring the planet looking for great opportunities at 30% off. And we're 
using other people's money or different private equity funds to fund these things. So wouldn't it be cool if that was, I think the big idea is if we had, you know, if you have money, you can still do the business supporting the students that are doing the business because they're doing it right. Right. And I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do. I'm just saying that would be the, that was the outlying original conversation of what we we're going to have. So as long as all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, it is 30% off. It doesn't need a pile of work. It's not a piece of shit. It can be third party managed and it really checks all the boxes that it is a good buy. Then we will buy it. And um, it's great. It's, it's just a great opportunity overall. And I just want to add that the private equity fund also, is um, a vehicle that uh, is synonym with the way we operate generally where we get paid last and the way the private equity uh, fund works is that the investors always get paid first and we always get paid last and yes. that's that was that was kind of what made this even more cool yep and everybody wins everybody wins the investors win uh, the person that's selling wins because if you know anything about how I do business we don't, we're not looking to steal people's property. You know, we're not bottom feeders. Um, do we buy at the right price? Absolutely. Do we want to buy it at the best possible price? That's the nature of the game, but without hurting our counterpart. We don't ever want to put the other person in a position of pain. And they have, you know, they have to sign off on this. It's not, if, if you really try to hurt your counterpart in, you know, in any way, they're not going to come show up to closing. They're not going to want to close this because they, they don't really want to sell it. We're not putting a gun to anyone's head. They, they need to sell, they want to sell, we come up to a fair price, they agree, we buy it, everyone wins. Get the tax deductions, you know, everything's great. So it's been a really interesting journey too to learn. We've learned so much in the last oh year about higher finance that, you know, I, I didn't go to, I'm a musician, you know, Gabe is way more educated, I think, and I don't want to talk about Frank, but you know, he's way more educated than I am, he has more degrees, he's, you know, I could never even touch what he's done in his life as far as the jobs that he's had uh, with, with, with money and regulation and all that shit. I dropped out of, you know, I did six months of pre-med, that was it, dropped out of college, cégep, uh, you know, that was it, and you know, it's cool to learn all these things. It really is to me anyway. I love learning. Love it. it. Is. I mean, I've learned as much as you have in the process as well, uh, you know, notwithstanding what I've known. But, you know, when you know something from a regulatory standpoint where you're, you know, I guess writing up the rules, it's a whole other set of uh, cards when you're the one who has to play by those rules. So, yeah, it's it's been a fun journey and it's going to continue to be one, I expect. Frank? I just don't want to wear orange. <laughs> hey, you don't look good in orange. <laughs> but... No, all things aside, well, you know what? No, the journey has been. It, it, we were just talking about it today. We got a form. We're looking at it. We're like, we don't know how to fill this out. <laughs> we we don't have to. Form. We don't have to shit on this. Okay, let's let's phone the attorney. Let's phone. It's not that we don't know how to fill it out. We don't understand nine pages of the ten. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Literally, there's not there's a yes. ten page form to get this insurance, and we understand one page, which is your name. <laughs> <laughs> the name of your company and where yes. you're from, yeah. Yes. Uh, everything uh, else is I like, don't understand the rest. Everyone else is going, but... Inverse hyperbolic go to edge and a square root of pi. What's, what color is the bear? Yeah. So we're, we're going to go get educated. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get on a call with the, with the insurer and they'll guide us. And, well, that was and a solution. Us. That was a solution. Yeah. It's like, walk us through this thing, right? <laughs> walk us through because we have no clue. And that's, that's the learning process. And once you do it once, then obviously you're more educated going forward. But yeah. It's uh, it's it's really funny when we're doing these things. We're like, I, I don't know what this means, Gabe, because I don't know what this means either. It's just, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, go to your mentor, and that's what we did. Uh, that's what we did, and that's how that's, we even that's got the beauty. To, yeah. Folding time. That's it. Figure. And in school, it was called cheating, and it was poo pooed on because you're not supposed to cheat in school. But actually, that's the secret to life: is cheat. Find someone that's better than you, pay them whatever they need, and then just get it done. That's how Richard Branson built his airline that's how any successful person does anything is they find the person that knows what the hell they're doing pays them whatever they need and you get it done correct here you here. can accomplish anything doing that yep and so did we and we're we're pretty excited about it and you know we'll be in the high finance business without a harvard degree and you know any of those things we don't need those things um, you just have to pay someone that's been to harvard to tell you what to do that's it that's all it is and real estate has allowed us to do that. Cash flowing real estate has allowed us to do that. And the only reason that we're able to do what we want, when we want, and the order we want to do things in is because we've followed processes that work. And we hope you do the same so you can accomplish whatever you want to do in life. And we thank you for listening into today's episode. Hopefully you learned a couple things. And of course, 
like it, love it, share it. And we look forward to the next episode. And of course, send us an email if you have any uh, questions whatsoever. Marco at MarcoKozlowski.com is my email. And of course, if you have not attended um, a class yet and would like to learn how to buy assets uh, at steep discounts using none of your own money, um, please send us an email. And if you have interest in finding out more about our fund, um, you can send an email to... Um, What's the email, guys, for that? CapraCapitalGroup.com. Invest at CapraCapitalGroup.com. So once again, if you're listening to this and it has not been edited, it's invest at CapraCapitalGroup.com. There you go. But I don't think I'm allowed to tell you that yet. I uh, look forward to you, the listener, of course, uh, giving us feedback of any kind. We always love it. And uh, again, our intention is not to be malicious in any way ever. We always want to be compliant. We always want to do the right thing. We always wanted to uh, you know, give you the best possible quality information that actually works, that is legal, moral, and ethical at all times. And uh, we want to make sure that we're always doing the right thing. And of course, the right thing is to give you necess the necessary information for you to really make big, huge changes in your life by making just doing small things. Small things make a big difference. Small hinge opens big door. And I look forward to helping you in that journey. This is Marco Kozlowski with Frank Galuccio and Gabriel Reich saying ta-ta for now. We'll see you on the next episode. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for a life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to GetDealsByTuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to GetDealsByTuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.